What's happening, guys? Welcome to Bleacher Blogger for Tuesday, October 2nd. I am Dave. I'm Brent, and I'm back, and I'm awesome. I don't know about the third one, but you are indeed back. What a huge weekend of college football. Legendary upsets, and we are here to break those games down. That's right. We also give you an NFL wrap-up, and uh, we get you ready for the MLB playoffs. <laughs> Your hat is on sideways, by Thanks. the way. Let's We're get it started with the Tuesday, Tuesday morning, morning reach, reach around. around. Give it a tug, baby. Tuesday morning reach around. Oops. Ooh. Next weekend was supposed to be undefeated Texas taking on undefeated Oklahoma. Oops. That's right. They both lost. Wah, wah. <laughs> Let's start with the Sooners, who lost to Colorado 27-24. to 24. We go to crimsonandcreammachine.com and CC Machine, who says Oklahoma should have brought their A game. Mm -hmm. For a team the caliber of Oklahoma to lose a game they should have won because of lethargic play is unbelievable, Brent. Attitude is everything, and while Sooners showed no grit or nastiness, Colorado did, and it paid off huge for them. I mean, Oklahoma scored over 50 points in their first four games. I'm really not sure if it was Colorado shutting them down or it was just a lethargic play of the Oklahoma offense. Over to Texas, where the Longhorns lost to Colorado 41-21. And let's just say it was a total team meltdown. We go to BurntOrangeNation.com for this little tidbit. The outcome was disastrous. Texas got out coached and outplayed in every phase of the game, and Ron Prince and his staff deserve credit for coming to Austin and whooping the Longhorn senseless. You know, Brent, yes. nobody reads a blog like you. Thank you. I was riveted that Thank whole time. You. Thank you. Wow. It takes another man to write it, though. I got to say that. Yeah, right. You can't write it so well, but no. boy, can you deliver it. I can't write it all, actually. <laughs> That's true. All right, so Texas and Oklahoma both blew it. However, yeah. we do have an undefeated LSU taking on an undefeated Florida this weekend. Ooh. Oh, wait, we don't? Wait. Oh, no. No. Oh, whoops. Now that's filthy. Let's head to the swamp where the Florida Gators lost at home 20 to 17 to Auburn and super fan ML Min Tampa over at alligatorarmy.com says, dude, this one's on me. That's right. He says, I also share some blame in this loss. I did the point spread poll without including the lose outright option. And I got a haircut today. He goes on to say, Dave, I could have gone to the lucky close in the second half, but I have the reserve for LSU and I was afraid to use them. You never get a haircut on the day your team plays. Come on! Dude, you're an idiot! You lost that game for Florida! I can't believe you! You shouldn't even be a fan anymore! I hope you're happy with what you did. Oh, you should feel terrible about yourself. Big weekend of upsets. Not only those games we talked about, but also West Virginia losing yep. to the, the suddenly red-hot USF Bulls, yep. and also Rutgers losing as well. Oh, that's a bad loss. We go over to the NFL, where Brett Favre and the Packers are relevant again. Finally, people in Wisconsin have something to do. Mmm, jeez. Capturing a little bit of the Favre love, we go to bratzenbeer.com, where he, she writes... A trip to the Metrodome is like going to visit your dysfunctional in-laws. You can never get out of there without a little drama. Now, there was also some drama of a different sort when Favre completed a 16-yard TD pass to Greg Jennings in the first quarter to break Dan Marino's career touchdown record. Now, he goes on to say that he wanted Donald Driver to get it, but the young rookie got it, and it's a sign of things to come, yada, yada, yada. Everybody's happy in Green Bay. I got to tell you, the Packers, nice little wonderful little success story. Yeah. There were two huge momentous wins uh, this week, and the Packers obviously going to 4-0, and uh, me crushing Brent's fantasy football team, which was actually even <laughs> a, a bigger win. And I'm, I'm going to write a blog about Everybody it. Everybody sucks, oh my. My team. I got Marvin Harrison's hurt. I got I got uh, uh, Deuce McAllister is hurt. Reggie Brown's supposed to be the number one option. They scored 56 points last year, last week. And you know how many you know how many uh, things Reggie Brown had? 23 yards with no touchdown. How do your team score 56 points and I get 23 yards and no touchdown? When we come back, we'll talk about the MLB playoffs. Sounds good, Dave. Fellas, I'm ready to get up and do my thing. Like some kind of mechanized device built for copulation with a lady. What? Welcome back. It's hey. time to talk baseball right now. And, you know, we asked some of you guys to give us reasons why your team would win the World Series. Even though the Red Sox are going to win. <laughs> uh, Cubs fan Glover4 on our website posted this foolproof bit of logic. And here it goes. The Chicago Cubs will win the World Series because... In 1908, we won our last championship. It was the year of the monkey. In 1945, during the year of the rooster, the Cubs received the curse of the goat. 2007 is the year of the boar. Now, the boar gets along with the goat. The rooster regained much from friendship with the monkey and the boar. In concluding, the boar 2007 will unite all generations and seasons, bringing harmony by linking all under one World Series banner of friendship, the fellowship of the championship ring. Uh, and that makes perfect sense to me. Foolproof. Total wait, wait a second. 
Where did that Bartman picture yeah, come I, from? Yeah, I didn't do it. Did you? No, I did. I Shirley Lee does all that stuff. I, did you do a Shirley? He says no. You know what that means? What? The curse lives on. Wow. Oh well, Cubs aren't going to win the World Series. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. mean much to you being a Yankee fan. I don't really care. Well, Maybe the Phillies will. You want to hear a Phillies blog? I'd love to. Yeah, let's go to thegoodfight.com. Fantastic. Where Dajafi is pretty psyched about his team. Yeah. Here's what he writes. They overcame a terrible start, barrage mm-hmm. of injuries, pitching meltdowns, and some of the most horrifying losses I can remember. They did it with the most potent offense they've ever mustered. And then he goes on to name all the great magical players who contributed to that offense. He's pretty psyched. I'm going to tell you something right now. The Phillies, out of all the National League teams that are in the playoffs this year, have the most American League looking offense. You know who likes the American League? Who? We do. That's right. Let's talk about the American League. You're so smart, Dave. You go first. All right, my beloved Yankees are taking on the Cleveland Indians. And you know what, Brent? What? I think the Yankees are going to win. Oh, surprising, Dave. Would you like to hear why? I'd love to. Because they're better. You want me to back that up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Deeper starting pitching. Really, Cleveland only has two starting pitchers that I'm at all concerned about at all. The Yankees have uh, the momentum of a furious surge to get themselves in the playoffs. And the Yankees have the best player in baseball, Alex Rodriguez, who is notorious for dominating in the postseason. That's all I have to say. And I don't have any time to retort, do I? No retort is necessary. Okay. And now to break down the Boston Red Sox Anaheim Angels, here's Jiminy Glick. Well, thank you so much. Dave, it's wonderful to be here. You know, here's what I think about the Angels and the Red Sox playing in Boston Fenway Park, one of my favorite hot dogs of all time. The Red Sox are going to win on some sort of Dave Henderson-like home run where they, you know, hit the ball with two outs almost to be sent home. And they go on to face the New York Mets in the World Series, except the Mets didn't make it this year. Oh, too bad. Time to get off the bench. Mm -hmm. Get off the bench. It's time once again to captionize. That's right, we love it so much. We want you to captionize this picture. Ooh, saucy. Nice to meet you. So here's what we want you to do. We would like for you to write down your caption of this picture and send it to us on our website or on YouTube or by Carrier Pigeon. However you'd like to get it to us. Mm. And the best ones we could read on air. And maybe we'll give you a t-shirt and Brent's autograph. Fantastic. My caption for this one, Dave? Shouldn't you get my number first? (laughs) (laughs) We'll see you guys on Friday. (laughs) See ya.